the meeting over to you. Please get us started. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you for your time today for our facilities workshop. This is a follow up to address some action items that we were tasked with from our last facilities workshop on June 16th. So we have three presenters today. Uh, first, we'll be presenting land values. Uh, that's uh, That will be presented by Ms. Ron Blake, our Director of Planning, and Mr. Michael McFarland, our uh, Senior Facility Manager Design, will present and summarize our estimating exercise with some assistance from Mr. Mark Lockard, our Director of Design and Construction. And finally, we'll land, we'll wrap up with bonding and financial considerations. So we'll move right into the land value piece. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Blake. Rhonda? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was requested to take a look at the values of the Gateway High School property and a possible alternative site briefly discussed at our last meeting. So currently Gateway High School sits on approximately 84 acres and the potential price at that highest and best use would be between 16.9 and 18.3 million with um, a large demo cost existing um, should those buildings need to come down by a new owner. The alternative site is on Fortune Road um, with frontage on Fortune, Fortune Road as well as a secondary access to Simpson Road it's approximately 66 acres. It last sold in February 2018 for 5.2 million. I did have the school board's um, real estate broker reach out to the owner. It's currently not listed, but they said they would entertain an offer if we wanted to move forward with more interest. Okay, thank you, Rhonda. We'll now move into the next portion of our presentation uh, to summarize our estimating exercise. Uh, Mr. McFarland, please proceed. Welcome and thank you for having me. Uh, the first slide that we are looking at is a recap of what you've seen before. Through the Castaldi process, uh, we are able to eliminate approximately eight and a half buildings with uh, keeping building two, a portion of the cafeteria, uh, the newer portion of the cafeteria, and working around that. Um, we are not going to uh, do anything with building 16 art or music with respect to this presentation or any uh, demolition. The next slide that you're seeing now is a recap of the construction, uh, the new construction. Uh, we're looking at approximately four new buildings. Building number one is an administration guidance and media center on the first floor with classrooms on the second and third floor. The kitchen serving and receiving in a portion of the dining is around building number two. And as you can see, we have that wrapped around the portion of the dining that we are, will be keeping. There'll be a new auditorium, building number three. And as you can see, that is located uh, adjacent to the music and art rooms. And we will be adding a new gymnasium building number four. Um, in the okay. uh, just, uh, and Michael, just, just, to, uh, um, just to bring back everybody's uh, recollection from the, the past board workshop, we actually looked at the possibility of retrofitting the, the ninth grade center, which is the Global Leadership Academy, into a possible gym configuration. Uh, subsequent uh, cost analysis tells us that that is uh, not viable for a, uh, from a cost perspective due to the fact that we'd have to replace the 16 classrooms that we would be displacing along with the new construction. It's actually cheaper to build the prototype gymnasium. So please continue, Mike. Okay. This slide is just a little bit closer look at the new building configuration along with the Global Leadership Academy in blue. Um, and the square footage is the approximate square footage of what we think the buildings will consist of. Uh, with the main building number 1 being a 3 story building and the other 3 buildings being single story buildings. Again, that's just a recap. Moving on, uh, we had met with Dr. Pace and we were asked to come up with a um, variety of different cost options for the district. 
we've already presented to you the uh, roughly the low cost option, which is doing bare minimum to uh, the existing into in um, renovation of existing buildings and for new construction. We also came up with a median price, which would in addition to the low cost, we would gain on the renovation side, things like a uh, new fire alarm, telecommunications, exterior painting, uh, technology upgrades and desk tables and chairs. As far as the new construction portion, we would be upgrading the uh, floor coverings from CVT to LVT, uh, and there would be some security upgrades. And those are just some examples of what the medium, low to medium could uh, do. We looked at a high upgrade, which would also include uh, what was in the medium, and we would include uh, windows, new windows and envelope modifications to the existing buildings. Demolition, co demolition cost actually goes up based on the amount of work that we do on the existing buildings. Um, new construction also went up and that was basically to add square footage to 21st century flex spaces. After meeting with Dr. Pace and discussing these options, we did come up with a recommendation of $78 million. We feel that we can give the district what they're looking for at this base cost uh, and provide all the amenities and necessities that uh, the district is used to having. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. McFarland. We'll now move into the last portion of the presentation, uh, our bonding and funding considerations. Unfortunately, Ms. Graber could not be with us today, uh, but I believe she's viewing uh, remotely, but does not have panelist uh, rights today. Uh, so uh, Dr. Pace and I will take you through this, this final piece. So our Thank bonding, you. I'm sorry, go ahead, Dr. No, Pace. go ahead, Mark. Okay, so the bonding considerations, uh, we're looking for a spend down within uh, a three year time frame for an estimated 50 to 75 million. Uh, so this would produce a 10 year uh, term and we'd be looking at issuing the bond now within the next six months. And keep in mind that our rates are very low right now. So this is a great time uh, to go out for a bond. Uh, the, the rates are currently below uh, historic 2%. And for, this allows us to preserve incoming cash for future projects. Uh, which you know is our, our sales tax collections, and uh, and finally, to um, issue later uh, a subsequent as needed 24 amount, uh, 24 months or, or longer, uh, to to look at our spend down cash uh, on hand, uh, so that we can look at future market conditions, uh, which are currently unknown. There's lots of variables that are, are playing out now. And, and we monitor those on a daily basis uh, just to make sure that uh, we remain solvent on this project, yet able to move forward with our project objectives, which not only uh, include Gateway High School, but some, several other sales tax uh, comprehensive renovation projects that follow Gateway High School. Uh, with that, uh, Dr. Pace, did you have anything further that you wanted to add? Uh, yes, Chairman Soto, may I um, just make a few comments? Yeah. Okay. Know, you guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Absolutely, Dr. Pace. All right. Thank you, Chairman Soto. And thank you, Mark and Mark and Mike and Rhonda and the team for your presentation. Um, could we go back one slide, please, Ruben or someone? Um, and as it re relates to the bonding issues, you know, Sarah has had some good discussions. She is on the call if, if we need need have questions specific for her that are more complex that I'm prepared to answer. We've also discussed it quite a bit with Mr. Thacker. And there are really two schools of thought here. Obviously, we want to be conservative and demonstrate fiscal responsibility with our dollars, um, particularly as we know, um, it would be likely that we would be going back out with the county and the cities in 2024 or perhaps even 2022. Um, to avoid a, 
a, a general election um, situation. Um, I'm sorry, that's too thought. Anyway, whenever the next cycle comes up, that would not be a presidential election. But so we're going to want to make sure that we've demonstrated fiscal responsibility with our sales tax and impact fee dollars for our community, which I think we have evidence to support that we have. At the same time, as you all know, with the current situation in the economy, interest rates are very, very low. Much and bond rates are, are obviously would be much lower than otherwise. So if we were to go ahead within the next six months and do a bond issuance, we would recommend that we consider moving up OXA, the Osceola County School for the Arts renovation, and also potentially Reedy Creek. Um, those are the next two projects on our sales tax list. Typically, we've kind of like started one, spent six months, and then you go to try to work on the next one and then the next one. But we could actually begin working on these three projects concurrently should we decide that a bond issuance at this time makes sense. We do have enough cash on hand to get us through the first part of this project. Probably about 24 months, we would need to go ahead and issue a bond at, at an amount that that board would establish based on the projects that they wish for us to prioritize and what the cost of construction does. Um, but as you know, we don't know what future market conditions um, will be. We have seen construction costs that had escalated tremendously over the course of the last 12 to 18 months, kind of starting to come down a little bit um, as a result of some slowdown in other industries on their construction projects. So that's really kind of where we are um, with that. Just going back to a few other comments um, about the presentation, you know, you tasked us with looking at the land value and, and certainly there is value for this frontage on 192 piece. But as we look at it, I, I don't think that that's something that we would necessarily recommend um, any high school. Uh, has a great deal of history and tradition that goes along with the site or a location and to uproot that project um, and try to move it down the road particularly because um, we don't, the, the current property on Fortune Road that we looked at is, is not on the market. So I'm, I'm not sure that they would take something that we would be willing to offer for that particular site. And I think that the county might have issues with us on Simpson Road. And Mr. Weissire pointed out um, that the last time you looked at that land, the Lakeside community was very opposed to a, a school board project going in right there. Um, as it relates to Tahoqua, as we really looked at the projected growth, particularly in that area, it's it's not possible for it to absorb the students that we currently have at Gateway. Um, and again, you would lose that sense of history that we think is important. Regarding the $78 million proposed budget, you know, the $65 million budget, we could do it, but it would be very, very minimal improvements to the existing building. So you might paint, um, exterior and not do inside of every single classroom. We would not be bringing technology up to its current standard. And it was my belief as we talked through the with the team and looked at the options while we're there, we want to make sure that we're bringing the whole campus up to our current standards and, and not just leaving having a great brand new beautiful building and then have some other classrooms that potentially don't look or perform as well for teaching and learning. Um, you don't want to be that teacher who gets stuck in the old building or those students who have class in the old building um, because we haven't brought it all up to a better standard. I don't think we need the luxury model. Um, you know, we've had good luck with the middle grade floors that don't have to be polished each and every year and that have a, a nice long lifespan, but we don't need the luxury model. But I do think that middle of the road kind of piece would be what we would recommend as a staff for your consideration today. So that's really all the comments I have, uh, Chairman Soto. I'll turn it over to you. And of course, all of us are available for any questions that you might have. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Um, I want to call on Mr. Thacker and then Ms. Castillo. Clarence, you have the floor. Yeah, I'm just going to bring you all up to date on some conversations I had uh, on the financing piece and some options we look at looked at. Um, we had some conversation with our financial advisor too. Um, don't hold me exact, but I'm real close. He felt that the rates were going to hold into 2020, 2021, I'm sorry, in, in the early part of next year. Um, there's a big unknown in November what happens in the election and what the impacts of that could be. But the reason I started asking some of these questions is there's another board I'm on that just did a uh, large bond issue, but they basically 
did a bank loan for the first, uh, I believe it's five years before they will actually draw on the bonds, which basically locked in the bond issue at a very low rate and the uh, private placement through, through a bank um, was an unbelievable deal on the interest rate, um, less than one and a half. The uh, kind of my thinking was on that, starting to ask some of these questions, just so you know where some of this came from, because it probably came, some of this came from conversations I had, was is there a way to possibly borrow the money now at a lower rate <clears throat> or at a very low rate that'll probably not last for too much longer um, and basically even pay that money off in a very short term so this says a 10-year term we actually talked in terms of fives and 10-year terms to where as opposed to paying all the cash you've got and then not being able to quite finish pull a couple of those other projects in and up and then you pay those all by the time you're done you've almost paid out your issues um, and it just gets you there probably five years faster than That's doing amazing. them on a pure pay as you go so um, I just kind of want to tell you, I want to explain to you where that came from and some of these questions came from. I think it's, I think it's an option. We can discuss whatever. I know some people feel one way about borrowing, other feel other way. Um, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of borrowing, but if you can borrow where it doesn't cost you very much money um, and, and get there faster, and, I, you know, I don't want to borrow $20 million and spend another 10 in interest. But if you can borrow 40 or 50, move these projects up a year or two, and it costs you a couple of million or you know, a little more than that probably over the term, um, I think it's worth a question on how we, could, how we want to proceed with that or not. So um, that's all I've got, Mr. Soto. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Thacker. And Ms. Castillo, before I call on you, I just want to, um, I, um, I just want to, I want to hear Dr. Pace's um, input or response to to Mr. Clarence's comments. I they really resonated with a lot I had in mind. Dr. Pace, are you still there? Yes, sir. I apologize, Mr. Chairman Soto. I am here, and I I absolutely support what Mr. Thacker is saying. He and Sarah did have a con um, a call with our advisors. Um, and you know, I, I I would love to see us be able to get a jump start on OXA and Reedy Creek, particularly School for the Arts. It's one of our highlight programs, and this would allow us to do it. Thank you. All right, Ms. Castillo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to confirm because I don't have the presentation in front of me, so I'm looking at it online. The new uh, the new seventy eight million dollar cost does include the 16, I'm sorry, does include the gymnasium, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, because that was my big issue um, before we, we had a quote without some of the essentials. So I was, I just wanted to make sure that the new quote did include everything, cost did include everything that, that um, is requested for this project. Thank you. All right, very well. Um... I'm just pausing briefly to see if there's any more board member comments or questions. And I don't see, I don't see any. I'll just, I'll just, um, again, I think that um, Mr. Thacker's observations and, um, and um, Dr. Pace's um, observations on being able to take advantage of certain market conditions make absolute sense. Um, it's always good to be ahead of the things that we need to do, especially when it comes to our obligations with 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 the community and the sales tax. Um, so I am definitely encouraged that we should move in that direction. Um, any other comments before we continue from anyone? All right, Mr. Chairman, I, I just like to amplify on on that point you just made. We are seeing some very favorable market conditions at this time. Uh, those projects that we've recently taken out to bid, not only have we had excellent coverage, but also uh, very favorable uh, bid results as well. So uh, hard to say what the market is going to do going forward, but um, it certainly behooves us with the case of Gateway to get to construction documents as soon as possible so that we can uh, hopefully capture those favorable market conditions and, and turn those savings back to the district. Absolutely. 
great job of the presentation as well to you and your staff. Um, def, you know, you, you've answered the questions from our previous workshop. Um, I, um, as I understood, uh, Ms. Rhonda Blake also provided a lot of the answers that we needed. Um, we always, as a board, need to consider options, even sometimes when they sound a little bit remote, uh, especially when we're talking about spending millions of dollars. But um, I think that from what I just been presented by the district, I would I would also encourage the the board to to view it as very favorable. It keeps us moving along, getting projects completed, making use of the tax dollars that were um, you know, entrusted with us, and of course improving our schools each step of the way. Thank you very much. If there's anything further, Dr. Pace, you could continue the beaming. Uh, yes, Chairman Soto, uh, we just would hear, like to hear a little bit more from, from the board. We are seeking consensus for the Gateway project as presented um, with a rough project budget of about $78,000. I think that would allow us to really provide not a luxury standard for the students and staff at Gateway, but a, a very uh, safe and comfortable and functional um, learning and teaching environment at, at the campus. Dr. Pace, I certainly, I certainly see this as the right approach. Um, it's, it's got um, it's got a great potential for success. I think that um, the amount that is requested is reasonable given what we understand. Um, I also I would also encourage the board to always be flexible um, as things develop that we may need to to adjust it. Sometimes it requires an increase that makes sense. Um, sometimes it doesn't. But remember what we're trying to do here, and that is um, you know improve our school. Wow to be the best in Florida and certainly and it certainly feels that way when I look at these projects. Board, is there anyone I'm looking for for hands? I don't want to take up all the microphone time. Dr. Pace, you get the floor. I, I would just simply say that, you know, as as we have historically done with our comprehensive renovation projects and all of our capital projects, just because we establish a budget of $78 million doesn't mean we're going to spend that. We're certainly going to look for every opportunity to save money and reduce costs. As Mr. Clinch said, we are looking at some favorable market conditions right now. I would love to bring that under speed, but, but I also want to make sure that we are providing for the students and the staff at Gateway High School uh, a school standard that you all will be very proud to have your names on. Yeah, yeah. and Dr. Pace, I, I've, I am I'm very well aware, and, and, and so is the community, about the transparency and responsible approach that your district and this board has taken. I guess that what my comments were is that, um, you know, we're always looking to do what's best and, and of course, always thinking about cost along the way. And, and so, you know, this is very sensible. $78 million is, it may not be, you know, and may not be too used up completely, but then again, it might be. What's important is that we have transparency we explain and that we're always pushing the envelope to provide the best possible programs to our students. With, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just looking for more comments. So board, I'm, I would at least ask for you to to um, to go ahead and at least indicate um, for the for the superintendent of the district um, what your support is there for the direction that they're taking. It certainly is with me. I'll call on, on Ms. Castillo. Yes, I support the direction we're going in. All right, and Mr. Thacker, I know that he's on. He's on um, in the meeting, Paris. Are you still there? You know, Mr. Booth, you have your hand up. You have the floor. Yes, Mr. Soto. Can you see me, or is it just a white blue? I can see you now. You're there. Uh, no, I want to thank uh, all the staff for doing the work. I know I brought up several issues last time when we talked at the last workshop. So I want to thank the staff for, for doing the research. I think it's important for the community to see that research. I think it's important for us to go through that process and look at, at, at all the different options. Um, you know, I think I think we're right on track here. I, you know, I will say. Um, yeah, there's a there's a good chance that we don't get the full 20 year 25 year term out of this uh, renovation here just simply because the um, the projects are going to happen in that area. But I think at this time, it's probably the right thing to do to carry forward with what the staff is recommending. So thank you. 
All right. Good comments, Mr. Booth. And I want to go back to Mr. Thacker. Clarence, are you are you connected? Um, Ruben, can you tell if anything is going on with that one? It you appears that we may have lost Mr. Thacker, uh, Chairman then, Soto. I have reached out to him to see. And Mr. Weissire, who's normally very quiet, so I couldn't tell if he is he on is he on the meeting? No. Okay. All he right, does so, not appear to be. <laughs> so, all right, Ricky. Um, so, Dr. Pace, at least you have the support of three board members and, and very, very possibly all five of us to proceed. Um, like I said, um, you know, let's let's um, let's keep working. Well, I want to thank Mr. Clinch and Mr. Miss Blake and Mr. Lockhart and Mr. McFarland for doing this this work. And 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 certainly, I want to thank the board for your leadership in asking these important questions so that we can um, be confident as we take a project out to our community that we have made good decisions and and really explored different angles. So thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Pace. Um, is so um, we'll move on to the next topic on the workshop. Dr. That's Pace. it. Is that it? That is it, unless you as board members have something else that you wish to discuss. That was all for our facilities uh, presentation today. All right. Well, um, we do have a little bit of time. Ms. Castillo, anything further? No, I, I know that we, we have a very important meeting coming up at 530, so we're, right. I'm good. <laughs> well, before before I on Mr. Booth, um, you know, um, always when we build a large school, it's always a very special you know, it's a momentous occasion. Um, we we went through a very long process with them, um, the Hope of Kaliga, and um, we have a beautiful school there. We're building another, you know, pretty much with Gateway, building it up to that standard. Um, it's always an exciting process, and it's um, I I, I mean not I'm not going to be around to see the finish of it as a school board member, but I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how Gateway is going to transform. What do you say? <laughs> oh, yeah, Dr. Pace. I just wanted to let you all know that Mr. Thacker can't hear everybody. He's just having a hard time logging back into the meeting with the WebEx, but he also said that he is on board with what we proposed for Gateway. Excellent. Perfect. Ricky, you have the floor. So we can talk bad about Mr. Thacker and then he can't say anything bad. He can hear that, us, though. <laughs> well, you'll hear about it somehow. <laughs> no, uh, just if, if it's okay if, we, if I change the subject just a little bit. Um, I know we're going to have a presentation by Dr. Pace, but I, I would like if she could just kind of walk us maybe through the the just kind of how she sees the meeting going uh, at the 530 meeting and what Absolutely. her plan is. I, I mean, I've looked at the agenda uh, and I know I've, I've talked with you, Dr. Pace, but I just want to see if you could just kind of walk us through what you think the meeting will look like and the timing and, and those things. I agree, Dr. Pace. Can you go at least do a, pre a prelude of what's, of what's to come and get us started sure. a little bit thinking? As um, I have the back to school survey results from both our staff and our parents to share and present with the board and, and with the public. Um, we also will have our two infectious disease partners from Nemours who have been participating in the back to school task force who will be able to provide some additional input and insight into what they're thinking as infectious disease specialists and, and aware of what's happening in our community. And then we'll lay out the options that we hope to be able to provide based on the board's um, consideration tonight for our parents and our staff members moving forward with the understanding that, that from the beginning, we have all pledged that safety would be our underlying premise and our, and our number one guiding principle, but at the same time recognizing how important face-to-face -face learning is to help our students really achieve at the highest levels that we want them to achieve and how unfortunately you know when you're reliant on digital learning um, it can cause some challenges for some of our most risky students and and that's what we want to try to prevent in in developing a plan today so i anticipate uh about a 30 minute presentation. We do have one, I believe, public comment that's been submitted via video that we will play for the board before I get started. If any other public comment comes in, you know, that can be addressed. We also do have two administrative recommendations for you to consider before we talk about the plan tonight, but that should be quick as well. Mr. Booth, you good? All right, Ms. Castillo. Okay, so we'll take this time then to 
um, gather our thoughts and we'll meet up again at 530 for our public school board meeting. And um, uh, I'll see you all that time. I'm going to adjourn this workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.